and we're going to quick fire them over now I know it's very difficult to have a one or two line answer to some of the questions but obviously we try and please everybody as much as we can Steve you have the, uh, the list of questions and um, we can take two or three from that and then we can chew over to the, uh, the other questions absolutely no problem ok um, well, well we'll throw this one at you Corey first of all it says could one of the reasons why the Blue Avians have put up a barrier with no passage exemptions, be that the 2,000 to 4,000 species present in our solar system at any given time will be taking part at the future trials as defendants, judges, jurors, scholars, councils, etc., depending on each situation. Absolutely. That is very possible. They erected this barrier to make sure that every one of the beings that has that was present when they erected the barrier that has tampered with human genetics with human society over the thousands of years that has they call it this grand experiment that no matter what their agenda everyone is going to be held accountable Okay. okay, that's great. We're just going to we're just going through the questions here. Um, there's one for we're just switching between yourself and David. Yeah, this one is for for David. It comes in uh, uh, from well, comes in from, from uh, someone who is very very interested in your work, and it says, "I was thrilled in your last update that you understood that only human energy has value, and that everything else, such as fiat monopoly money, is valueless." Are you aware of or do you have contact with Lisa Harrison in Australia or Carrie Campbell in New Zealand? Uh, I'm not familiar with either of those names, so I don't... Uh, I, also, the signal got a little choppy, so are you asking about the louche, the, uh, the, that the negative entities feeding on fear, that kind of thing? Uh, well, it, it's just again, it, it's uh, in relation to human energy has a value. This lady says that she said that you did say in a, in a recent yeah. update that he, human energy has a value and that everything everything else basically is value less. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think I get the the core of the question. Um, go back to the first book that I wrote that was a published book, and it's called Source Field Investigations. Uh, I have had an honorary PhD offered to me uh, just for the first half of that book. Um, there's a variety of red tape I'd have to go through, and I have to get a, a, a approval committee, and I have to kind of repackage some of the book as a, as a doctoral thesis, but it wouldn't be that hard to do. Uh, I just haven't had time to deal with it. But the point is that I did create a scientific argument. People like to say that the haters like to say I have no science. It's totally not true. There's over 1,000 academic references in source field. And the core hypothesis is that we are fundamentally living in a biological universe. The universe is alive. And what life really is at the core is not flesh and blood, it's energy. And so the term that I chose for the energy was source field. It's interesting as the investigation has continued to find out that there are negative entities out there that feed on our source field. Uh, yeah. So all the science that I did to prove that there is a life force now supports this idea that the bad guys ultimately are feeding on our life force. And so as bizarre as this sounds, we have these Draco that... Corey was just referring to. These are reptilian-looking humanoids. They evolved through this scripted intelligence into a hominid form out of reptiles. So they still have reptilian features. And these are the core villains in our region of the galaxy. They've enslaved and oppressed many, many planets, not just Earth. They're just a factor that everybody around here has to deal with. Uh, they appear to have run out of time. But what they did with Earth is they custom designed a fear factory. They created a, a generating mechanism that creates this energy they need to feed on, which they call louche. 
And we are seeing our Earth-based governments doing very strange things behind the scenes, creating terrorism, false flag attacks, wars, all these things that are really detrimental to human life. And then you say, well, why are they doing this stuff? And ultimately what we're going to find out is that although some of these people have zealously embraced the idea of reducing population and have very aggressively worked on those goals, which again and again are being blocked by the benevolent forces, but don't think for a minute they didn't want a nuclear war. Don't think for a minute they didn't want swine flu or West Nile virus to kill billions of people. Mm. Don't think for a minute they haven't tried to get World War III or, you know, spray chemtrails in the sky that would kill us or any number of crazy things they've tried to do. The real people who benefit from that stuff is these Draco because they actually, they are replenished by human misery and suffering and fear and pain and jealousy and anger and materialism. All the things that that the earlier generation, pre-millennial generation was taught to want from television and media, you know, grab for the gold, grab for the products, try to make as much as you can. Now you have a whole generation that's on the business end of that stick, and they're very angry. And they don't want anybody to make money. And when guys like Corey and me come out, invariably you see tons of comments from millennials saying, oh, my God, they're making money. And so, look, we're not trying to feed the loose system. We're just dealing with a system in which we do have to have money to survive. Of course. We can't do what we're doing without it. Well, it's, a, it's an exchange of energy, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. And that isn't by nature bad. No. It's just that we have been engineered to be in fear. If it bleeds, it leads. We're constantly being given new things to worry about. And this is reaching a, a breaking point. Uh, Alan, Stephen, both you guys, you're in one of the so-called pigs countries, P-I-I-G-S, yeah. Portugal. You know, so... Look, it's already on the books in the European community and in America when Greece goes down, which as of, you know, an hour before we started this show, the Greeks have now said that they're going to pull out the banks. Nobody's going to be able to use the bank for at least the first day on Monday, possibly the whole coming week. Greece owes 1.6 billion euros, as you said. Mm. And just over the weekend, the Greek people have pulled out 1.3 billion euros from the banks, and they did such a bank run that only 40%, this is right off of Telegraph UK, only 40% of the cash machines in Greece had any money left in them after this weekend. So if you don't think, if you think this is all going to stay the same, nothing's ever going to change, this is building up to something, and there are laws on the books for the European community and America that once the banks start to go down, they can take your money right out of the bank and bail themselves out with it. Yeah. It's called reverse interest rate or bail-in or various things like that. And that's, this that's, is one of the things that Corey's insiders have told us a lot about. Yeah, and that's on the, the Reuters news group. They've actually said that all the countries in Europe have to sign up to the bail-in agreement before the end of the month. And uh, the Reuters reported, I mean, they're very blatant about it. And, uh, you know, they didn't hide it. They're, they're telling us exactly what they're doing. Cyprus was one of the first countries as a template that was uh, attacked right. for the bail-in. And um, obviously it's going to go around Europe because they, a lot of the banks are trading as insolvent anyway. It's, there's yeah, no I mean, money left in anything. The, the U.S. debt ceiling has been frozen 25 million below the limit for over 100 days. They're, they're still spending money, but they're just not even reporting it anymore. They're just printing yeah. money out of nothing that they're not allowed to do. So, this so is, it's a very serious situation. Yeah, so this is a massive Ponzi scheme that's just going to collapse because the figures yeah. don't add up. And it has to collapse. I totally agree. It has to collapse. But what Corey said earlier on about the, West, uh, the Western... Um, uh, side of things we had a hundred years because of the Federal Reserve and now the eastern side want to have a go so does that mean we're going to have a resurgence of a new financial system but still based on the Babylonian money system well I don't think that's going to be allowed to happen I think there, there are groups that want that but uh, there's a space program alliance and that alliance is definitely going to get its voice heard the, the, there is a whole effort being made here 
for a disclosure that is so big that we, Corey and I have been told, don't worry about the ridicule, don't worry about the hate. Right now our goal is not necessarily to prove what we're saying, it's just simply to get people ready for the massive emotional shock that they will have when this all starts to come out. And we are trying to take the edge off of that so that society doesn't have a much greater negative reaction as the things that we've been talking about are then suddenly widespread. Because apparently that is going to happen, and apparently one of the weird things that we know from one of Corey's meetings is the people of the Illuminati calling themselves the Committee of 200, in one of the meetings that Corey had, they said, we, they were threatening Corey's life and my life, saying, we have kept you guys alive as a favor to you, but please don't, disclose, <laughs> please, please don't disclose any more information until November, and then you're fine. Now, that indicates to me that they have plans in place to do their own form of disclosure sufficiently enough that as long as they – could keep us quiet until November. It doesn't matter at that point, which is very interesting. Okay. No, I totally agree. We've been told this before, that when the proverbial hits the fan and all this information comes out, that people who are light workers or star seeds will be there to kind of keep the calm, you know, calm everybody down while they're running around like headless chickens. We'll be there saying, okay, look, calm down. This is what's really going on. And because it will be like... You know, it, the information overload for people who are just in the matrix and don't get it would be just phenomenal. And maybe that's why there well, are certain star seeds around to compensate for that. And I would also remind you to look back to history with the Snowden disclosures and realize that once those things were said and they became publicly known, anybody who had been talking about that before went from being ridiculed to being a hero. Hmm. And all of a sudden, the media now has all this stuff that they can go back to and say, look, this guy whistle blew on the NSA. This guy told us what was going on. This guy wrote a book about it. This guy came forward. He told us this was going on. It's going to be the same thing when we get cosmic disclosure, when we get the space disclosure and yeah. the extraterrestrials and all that. You're going to go back and you're going to say, look at this guy, look at this guy. Wow, he was actually telling us the truth all along. So you That's apparently what we're heading into. So you reckon, but if they said that to you by November, to stay quiet till November, and obviously it's going to look good if they do it, because if the ETs come and do it, because if the Cabal don't do it, then it's going to look bad for them. So they're obviously putting the plans in place to have a disclosure, and then they'll come out and say, well, we were going to tell you about this anyway, we were just getting things organised. Yeah, they definitely they're apparently like trying to put yeah. yeah, they're trying to put together some sort of controlled narrative disclosure mm. to where they can hide their crimes against humanity but give just enough information which would I mean just announcing that we're not alone and you know there's possibly a secret space program, and, and some of that information alone would be enough to blow society up for a while. Yeah. And, and they would be able to try to bury uh, their uh, crimes against humanity for, and, and stretch it out as long as they could. Mm. And another thing that came about in their meeting was that – in that meeting was that they wanted to – they said that for the sake of the poor people who couldn't handle it – they wanted to bury a lot of these crimes for another 50 years. Well, what happens is when you actually pull over the curtain, that's a famous quote I heard by a, a good friend of mine who's sitting about five feet away from me. When you pull open the, co the curtain and have a peek and you see what's behind it, you want to pull it open further. So, exactly. And, and you I can't, think can't, can't just peek into... Um, uh, Pandora's box. Once you crack it open, it all flies out. That's it, and I think that's that's what will happen. I just I'm just conscious of time, guys, and I want Steve to. Steve has a good a few more questions for you, so we'll go over okay. to the questions there. I, I was going to I was going to see if uh, I can take a question, and then David can take a question because I I don't know how you say it there. I need to run to the little lads room. <laughs> yeah, okay, no problem. Do you, do you want to go now, Curry, and then we'll 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 pass uh, the question off to David first. 
That would be great. Okay. Thank you. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll throw this one over for, for Dave. Dave, this one just came in online recently. And it said, uh, seeing that the Draco lives off of negative energy, such as anger and hate, what would happen if we, the people, were to send out love and positive thoughts? What would that do to the Dracos? If this is something that I heard from a guy who worked for the Rothschilds, which is the top human group in the Illuminati, the top family of the 13 bloodlines. Uh, yeah. I call him Jacob. Um, there's a few people I have who gave me extensive information about the space program. At least 90% of it I withheld from the Internet. Corey comes along, and we start talking about all this stuff that I've never made public. And there were – I stopped counting around 50 or 60 times where he said something I'd already heard that I'd never published, or he finishes a sentence before I finish it. It was unbelievable. So Jake was – one of the top space program people I know. I learned a tremendous amount from him. And he was still working for them and not entirely, uh, you know, he still kind of bought into their agenda to some degree. But he really did not like the Draco. And he told me that one of the greatest secrets of the Draco is that if enough people on Earth felt happy and laughed, laughter actually, for one day, that one day of enough people on Earth smiling, happy, and laughing would literally defeat the Draco on the spot. They, they would die if they had that loose supply cut off for one day. So all we need is one event and, and go back to Live 8, which people in Europe probably remember that a lot better than Americans do. You guys had this great event where all the great 60s, 70s, and 80s rock stars all came together to end world hunger and defeat poverty and environmental destruction. And then guess what happens? All that momentum to change the world was completely deflated. I think it was four or five days later by the 7-7 London tube bombings. All of a sudden, oh, my gosh, you know, I've been to London. I've ridden the tube myself. It's a great thing to have. It gets you through the city beautifully. Everybody uses it. Then you have terrorists blowing up the tube. It took all that energy, all that love, all that potential for us to really have momentum, and it puts everybody into the English 9-11. Yeah. yeah. So the, the war is very real, but if we get a positive event, that's it. They're done. And that seems to be, this is an interesting thing, is that solar energy uh, flash, that sort of energetic change that we go through, it's not just something that takes place on a specific day. It seems to be a direct byproduct of what is called in the law of one, the moment that humans reach what they call social memory. And that's where enough of us feel positive that the, the compartmentalization of the mind breaks down and we become telepathic again. And it happens apparently quite suddenly. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, like from what we see over here, and I'm guessing you guys see it over there too, that there's, there is so many things happening on a daily basis that, uh, you know, I mean, even even I believe if, we're, if Live Aid uh, were to happen again, I don't think it would have the same effect that it did when it happened in 1985, because back in 1985, like, things were a lot different. You look at today, and there's so many people immersed in debt, uh, people, you know, suffering foreclosures. There's austerity, so many people yeah. suffering austerity, uh, and for those who aren't suffering austerity or, or you know, awaiting a foreclosure, um, they're probably one of the many who are stuck in the the whole mindset of reality TV. You know, because there's so many TV channels over, uh, well, across the world, just just. Just churning out BS, you know, day after day, tw oh, yeah. and 24 hours a day. So, I mean, even if Live Aid were to happen or, or something of that magnitude, I don't think, I'd say probably half the planet wouldn't get it anyway. They probably wouldn't be interested, unfortunately, because I actually remember that day back in 1985. And there was, you could, add, like, I wasn't at the concert. In fact, I was working on the day, and but on the way home, uh, I was, I had, you know, listened to some of it on, on, on radio, and it was electric, it really, really was, and as you say, if, that, if something like that magnitude could happen again, uh, it would be fantastic, it really would, I mean, if, if that's what it would take to, to you know, get rid of the, these Dracos, negative energies, it would be amazing, but then again, as you, said, as you, just, you just said, to David, that within a couple of days of 
that happening live aid then we had the 7-7 bombing so whatever good could have been done from that was it was marred by by this this uh i'm, I'm not going to say a terrorist att- well i suppose it is a terrorist attack but i mean uh, not not by terrorists i think it was government uh, orientated personally speaking well just imagine a tribunal where the real people who have been pulling the strings in what Tories folks call the secret earth government are actually arrested and then their crimes are actually revealed to us as ugly and as dirty as that is this has been hiding in the background of everybody's mind i had nuclear war drills when i was in school where we had to get under our desk as if that's going to do anything for a freaking mushroom cloud <laughs> yeah we've been living under this everybody alive has been living under the tyranny of these people who have wanted to, to destroy us and the amount of inspiration that would happen when the real problem is finally exposed and it's dealt with instead of it's being black versus white or Muslim versus Christian, the effect that's going to have is tremendous. Absolutely. Definitely. Now, do you have more questions? Do you want to pass one off to Corey? We have loads of questions. Yeah, uh, Corey, this question came in on, on the chat room there from uh, one of the listeners calling themselves Powers. And this says, question for Corey. Did the family that you and Gonzale selected to leave the Mars con- colony make it safely to the moon colony? What happened to the family member that was not present? And is the, whole, is the, the entire family safe, including the missing one? Um, unfortunately, no. Um, they remained behind, and um, I have not received any further intelligence about what occurred after we left. I, um, I it would be very interesting, uh, as someone stated, to be a fly on the wall to see what occurred after um, we were pulled out of uh, the. Large, the largest cell they had that they put us in in the, in the back, but uh, I have I have no idea uh, what what became of that entire situation. Okay, but Corey, you also said that all the people that are held in slavery will be released as a part of this greater disclosure effort, right? Yes, all in in the end when the, there is a full disclosure. Um, not only will all of these ICC, SSP um, facilities, all of their infrastructure be handed over to humanity, but all, all of these slaves and, quite honestly, a lot of the SSP Alliance people have, have – they, they've been through a lot. They're pretty they, – they, you know, these aren't just angelic people. A lot of them are damaged people. They're going to be offered – a sanctuary at one of the allied beings planets or colonies to where they're going to be given an ab- a, a time to recover from all of the horrible things that happened to them before they are offered um, reintegration into earth society Okay, what would you say, in between yourself and David, what would you say will take place in the next three years? What would you, I mean, I don't want to put a date on it because, you know, we don't want to get stuck on dates for obvious reasons, but given the window of the next three years, what would you think might happen, um, you know, to the planet and to, you know, will we get the disclosure, will we get what we want? Uh, Do you reckon the event might happen in that window? I would say it's likely, but from everything I'm being told, it very much depends on each and every one of us. Right. It depends on on us and our awakening and us learning about our shared consciousness and the power of our power of our shared consciousness. Our shared consciousness is what these I guess Illuminati groups have been working really hard to keep us unaware of. They use our shared consciousness and its co-creative abilities as the root of their black magic. Mm. They use media and and all these different things David was talking about, these fear porn things to plant seeds in our consciousness. And we have a, a vast spectrum of emotions that help activate our consciousness and and it's 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 a gift 
and it's it's also not so much of a gift until we learn to control it. But they'll enact a false flag or put out another huge movie that causes our consciousness, mass consciousness, and our emotions to make that incident occur. So our act, actual co-creative consciousness abilities are the power, the root power of this cabal's black magic. And if we can reclaim that power, we have the power to make this happen tomorrow if we wanted. Yeah, we just or, have to to, to um, increase the level of consciousness on the planet. Absolutely. Increase it. Okay, Steve, over to you for more questions there. Right, well, I think the last one was actually to, to David, so this one is, is for Corey again. This is one of the email questions that we received in earlier, and it says, in his book about the tall whites in Nevada, uh, Hall mentioned that they asked for and the military satisfied their wish for one million children's outfits of clothing. Apparently, the military never asked a single question, hoping to obtain technology transfer. Hall also said the tall whites never ceased to repeat that they love their children much more than earth parents love their children. The tall whites specifically uh, demanded that Hall not be placed under any clearance or oath. And the, 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 again, they're just looking for your comments on that one. Well, there, you know, this this group is um, is a part of this. Uh, loosely a part of this super um, federation. They, 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 there's a lot of jealousy of a lot of these ETs of humanity, as strange as this sounds. Through all the tampering of our genetics and our light bodies and all these, all this tampering that they've done to this great experiment for all this all of these millennia, we have developed this extremely wide spectrum of emotions that they only f experience a narrow band of. And the problem is we don't know how to control them, and we're ruled by those emotions. So a lot of them are very Vulcan-like and see this as a weakness. They have very strong and narrow band of emotions and yes they would see I'm in full control of my emotions and I fully love my offspring and some of you your people murder your children or do this to your ch other horrible things I won't mention to your children on your planet and, and make comments like that but um, you know there, there there is a definite disparaging feeling from a lot of those beings towards humanity. Well, they say about like uh, us doing horrible things to our children, just out of curiosity, uh, would the, the likes of vaccination programs, would, would that be considered being abusive to our children? I believe so. I, I, I def I'm not going to name the name, but uh, I worked for a pharmaceutical company that uh, produces that produces vaccinations, and uh, I, I spoke to uh, the uh, the bi the engineer bioengineers, and uh, they said that they do not give their children the vaccinations. Yeah, that's quite. It's uh, it's it's interesting when you hear the, the likes of that. We actually had a seminar here last week, and we, we mentioned at the seminar about uh, chemotherapy. And Alan said that uh, you know, in a recent study, a lot of doctors were were asked if they or one of their children uh, came down with with cancer, would they get down the road of chemotherapy? And I think something like seventy five percent was seventy five yeah, seventy five percent yeah. of the doctors said no, they wouldn't get down that road. So you kind of when you hear that, you kind of wonder, you know, are we just being mm. experimented on? Mm hmm. Big yeah, time. it's it's horrible. Okay, so basically, I mean, do you have more questions there? We can, do you want to crack on? Pages, pages, pages of questions. Pages and pages. Those are, I'm yeah. just, cause I'm I can only imagine. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Give, give us another one there. 
Okay, who who we got? We go with uh, with David this time. Well, actually, I suppose both both of, both of the lads. This w- this one come in from Chris. Chris is a long time listener of the show, and and he, Chris has said, uh, "Hi lads, could you ask David if possible? Has has he ever con- has he ever considered, or is he concerned that he may be being used?" Uh, to spread this information as some of the predictions, the recent predictions, have not come to fruition? Well, always as an investigator, my role is to be skeptical of my sources. Uh, we do know that there were plans in place to have mass arrests and that events occurred that destroyed the lives of the people who were planning them. And for example, there was a case that showed up in the news for a while where this guy actually goes into the White House, I think it was the White House, and shot people. And it's one of these false flag, you know, lone nut gunman kind of things. Hmm. There have been multiple attempts to try to get mass arrests to happen. And unfortunately... I am guilty, as are others, of wanting to talk about this and wanting to get too specific about when and how and actually tipping off the enemy so that they were able to eliminate that from happening. And, Corey, in fact, one of the things that you and I first talked about when I first started to talk to you was how there had been several attempts that were made that got infiltrated like this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, the... They're, they they infiltrate everything. They're they're extremely good at that. And and also there's that uh, um, AI um, technology aspect to the equation, to where they can um, see probable futures and uh, are able to sidestep problems like that. Well, I know when David was on the last time, we were actually talking about this. And David, we were talking about the looking glass technology. And I remember you saying that, you know, we were talking about 2012, coming, to, coming up to 2012. And you said that they couldn't get beyond 2012. There seemed to be some kind of timeline shift or a change in the timeline where you couldn't see past that. Do you have an up-to-date on that? Do you know actually what happened? Are they still using looking glass and are they still having that problem? The latest intel that I have dovetails with what Corey is saying and also some of the intel was from people that he introduced me to. Nobody expected in the cabal the events that are now happening at the speed that they're happening. They They had foreseen that the sequence of events that's now taking place would occur, but they thought they had a lot more time. Yeah. And that therefore does indicate that although apparently some technologies can still view probable futures, it's not like it's completely blanked out. Hmm. It's no longer accurate. It's no longer serving them in a functional way, and they are ever increasingly being surprised by unexpected events that they could not have anticipated and therefore prepared for before they happen. Yeah, yeah. Because we've, we've heard from another guest who actually said that because there was a, well, he feels anyway, based on his research, that there was a timeline change. And although certain things were supposed to happen, because of the, the energy coming into the, the, the universe, the solar system, and made various changes, that the timeline, the kind of negative timeline we were supposed to be on is now on, we're on a positive timeline. And maybe this negativity is just part of the, you know, we're going down the Bert Canal and there's going to be a few pains, but at the end of it, it's going to be joyous. I mean, I think this is his take on it. I mean, Absolutely. Do you feel that we're, you you know, know, that's what's happening? Yeah, when I, when I, absolutely I do. When I was in contact with uh, Jacob, who, as I said, was this guy that worked for the Rothschilds in the space program division and was actually very directly involved in helping them in many ways uh, and also working as a whistleblower at the same time and actually got in a lot of trouble for it more than once. Um, He was very overconfident about the power of their ability to look into the future. Mm. And he would laugh and say, look, this system is foolproof and we know what's coming and it it works and nothing is going to change that. Well, 
That's the way they all felt. And reality itself appears to have been structured in such a way where there is a habitable timeline that actually is a real place that you can time travel into and you can live there and you can have your life be there. And that is real, and that's what they were seeing. But the scope of the technology of these sphere beings apparently is so great that although that timeline does exist, it's not the one that actually we're going into, and it's not the one that will take place, and the cabal is not allowed to see the real timeline. They're given a completely compartmentalized alternative reality that they think is true, but is actually not what's going to be happening. Hmm. And Corey, I don't know if you want to add something on this, but that's my take on it. Okay. And and I, I agree. I agree there. Um, our, and I, I go back to consciousness on this, our consciousness affects timelines. And um, the technology that um, they have used so successfully in the past is not working the way it used to. And uh, it is an, like, an, an, an basically an AI-based supercomputer that spits out very accurate probable futures. And um, the, uh, there's a, a very strong AI presence, and a group of these people are AI prophets, basically. And there is a strong AI aspect to what's going on here on Earth that we haven't even begun to cover. And um, there, there's probably not even enough time to get into that. But um, it, it's, it's not working like it used to. Mm. Well, I know I definitely can say over here in Ireland we've had major protests regarding they want to privatise our water and charge us for it, which we already pay. Now, I think the government thought that people, the Irish people, would just sit down and go, Asher, what can you do? And not do anything about it. But we've had mass protests and people adamant that they're not paying it. I mean, at least 700,000 out of the probably just over a million people that should be paying it aren't paying it. And we had ceremonial burning the bills in the middle of the main street in Dublin and certain areas around the country. I mean, the consciousness in Uh, Ireland has risen on a phenomenal level. And it's brilliant to see. And the government did not. And the people who manipulate, I mean, Europe control all the countries, as you know. And um, I don't think they expected the people of Ireland to do what they did. Well, yeah, that's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I mean, what are they going to start charging for oxygen next in the air? I mean, water falls out of the skies. The, the sun produces water. I mean, the water. In, I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, that's that's just absolutely. The more ridiculous they get, and the more draconian they get on the laws they pass, the more it's going to force people to wake up. And that's what's happening. That's exactly what's ha- happening over here in Ireland. Even people who are very law-abiding are turning around and saying, "Ah, oh, now you're ridiculous. You're taking the pee now. We're not going to be doing this. Where are you going with your laws?" And they're trying to sneak in laws underneath the radar. You know, our government and people are looking at it and going, "Now, hang on a minute, I'm not, I'm not doing this. You can send me to jail. I'm not doing this." And this is what's happening over here in Ireland, and it's brilliant to see. I mean, I've got an 86-year-old auntie who doesn't want to pay the water meter charges. They're saying, "Why should I pay it when I pay it already in my taxes?" You know, and she's 86, and there's loads of people around the country who are just saying, "No, nah, look, lock me up, go on," you know, and. Um, I mean, what are the government going to do? They're so frustrated. They've really woke up. And this big thing that's happened in Ireland with the water has woke up uh, so many people over here in Ireland. And even in Europe, with what's going on around Europe, um, so many people, especially the Greek Greek situation, that's woke up an awful lot of people as well. So, you know, I think the consciousness of the planet, just going to finish up, because I know we're up against the clock here, but just to finish up, I just think the consciousness of the planet 
and um, it's happening. I think it is happening, and on an exponential level, I think it is increasing, and hopefully we will see disclosure quite quickly, and you know, um, a light being shone down them rabbit holes where we'll actually see what the cabal did and what they were up to, and they will be exposed, and fingers crossed, you know, that's, um, that will happen in the next couple of years. But I'll just say thanks to Corey and thanks to David. I definitely think... We're going to have to do a part two. Steve has two quick questions to to get in before we wind things up. So, Steve, yep. over to you. Sure. I, I've got two quick sure, questions. If, sorry, if, go if, ahead. If, 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 and I'm sorry, if I might add, you know, post-disclosure, we're going to be moving into more of a natural law kind of system and more of an Ubuntu, like, uh, is it Michael Tellinger? Yeah. Uh, type system. And uh, we, we speak more about this um, in in. I know it's a lot to cover in two hours, and, and I'm sure we can do maybe a part two later. Of course, but yeah. we speak a lot. We speak a lot more about this in our in our Gaim TV interviews that you know people can look at. Brilliant. No, we definitely do a part two. Steve, do you want to throw them two questions? Yeah, over? we've got two questions and a, and a sneaky one as well. <laughs> uh, uh, There's always a sneaky one. Are, you, are you watching the clock? You I'm watch watching the right. clock. I'm watching. Yeah, the first question is from Mike. Uh, Mike's, Mike says, massive US and NATO troops and military equipment have been transported all over Europe. And it's obvious that all this massive build-up over the last weeks and months is in preparation for a large war against Russia on European soil. There also have been countless prophecies about this major war against Russia and Germany being the major playground. Once again, do you have any intel on this? Are we really close to a war? We've been really close to uh, World War III for quite some time, but it's been prevented over and over and over and over. Um, it's been put into our mass consciousness that there's going to be a, a great war of wars. But from what I'm being told, the other half knows what's going on. Putin is one of the people kn knows more about what's going on in space than just about any other person on the planet. And um, it takes two people to tango. And I don't know if they're going to want to do the same dance that the West is going to want to do. So I, I, I personally do not see it happening. Well, yeah, and I have an abundance of insiders who have all shared with me how very strange interventions keep taking place over and over again. Um, and I'll give you some disparaging examples. Some black ops aspect of the United States tried to send in a team of uh, scuba divers to plant a small explosive device on an oil rig in the Persian Gulf. And it would have been the BP oil spill all over again, but in the Persian Gulf. Yeah. And they felt that would make the Arabs angry enough that they could get World War III. And the scuba divers tried for 12 hours to swim to the rig with the backpack on that had the bomb. And there was this barrier in the ocean. And it was they, they reported it as being like an elastic, rubbery skin was invisible to the eye. But the farther they tried to swim into it, the more it would spring back and, and push them back away from it. They tried to go over it. They tried to swim over it on the surface of the water. They tried to burrow under it. And after 12 hours of total futility, they decided they couldn't get through it. They've done all kinds of stuff. They, had, they tried to roll tanks into Syria, and the tanks wouldn't start. They tried to drop a bomb on somebody and blame it on a false flag, and the bomb bay doors wouldn't open. They've had aircraft that were loaded up with all kinds of, uh, you know, dead bodies and stuff. That was one of the things they tried to do with Russia, the MH17 crash. There's a huge story with that. So they, they will try, but they're not allowed to succeed over and over again. Yeah, we heard something about CERN, that, that uh, the, the, the whole CERN thing as well, that certain powers that are outside of uh, obviously this reality are making sure that doesn't, that doesn't happen as well. None of that stuff's going to be allowed to happen, and that's such an important point. People have – we're so conditioned by action movies to think of the hero coming in and vanquishing the villain in a hail of gunfire, and people are trained to believe in that script, so a lot of people are having trouble with the sphere beings because they say, well, why don't these great ETs come and save us? But what they're actually doing is so much more cool than that. They're keeping the villain from being able to win – but they're leaving it up to us to finish them off. 
Okay, that's that's fair enough. Steve, you got another one there? Yeah, again. Is this, a, is this the sneaky one? Uh, no, the, sne- the sneaky yeah. one, which, which you, we may not get to, because it was just one, one of the listeners want to know what, how, how you guys feel about Cobra. Uh, but if we, if we get to that point, but uh, Derek was wondering, will you ask David and Corey to leave us with some new pieces of info as he did on the Fade to Black show, and possibly, yeah, uh, well, same question to Corey as well. Well, I think you're kind of double dipping there because Corey already did that. Um, we. Okay, I'll give you one piece of intel, which is not really that extraordinary, but it is for Corey and me personally. Uh, I have two shows on Gaim TV. I have two shows on Gaim TV. I have Wisdom Teachings, which has about 130 episodes, and I have Disclosure, which is now going into its second season. And I interviewed all the biggest names like Graham Hancock, John Anthony West, Robert Boval, a bunch of really great folks. Guy had a policy that I was not allowed to do more than four interviews with any one person uh, on my show, and usually it was only two. Graham was an exception, but even with the exception, I think we only got maybe six. Uh, so we went in there to do this show. It was going to originally be, you know, part of the season two of Disclosure to interview Corey. And we had every person in the hierarchy of Guy and I'm saying now the CEO – the president, the director, the head of production, the marketing staff, the production staff, everybody was buzzing about this so much because when we got Corey on camera, I started asking him questions about the space program, and four episodes barely even gets us started. So what has happened, and this is new, so I did want to make this announcement, Don't ask me how this occurred, but it was signed off by the CEO, by the president, by the director, by everybody, that there's now going to be 52 episodes, half an hour each, of Corey and me talking, where all I do is ask him questions. I'm not really supposed to talk at all. So he's doing all the talking, and every single one of them is him just spelling out the scope of what's going on. Um, As far as specific intel that's new, I would say that the latest that we didn't already publish is what Corey had described earlier, which is that there are some deals being made with the Super Federation groups now where they're being more willing to cooperate, but the Draco group is now saying that it's a declaration of war, that they're not being allowed to leave the solar system, and they're going to try to take some offensive military action apparently. And it's when they start doing stuff like this that they get stupid, And getting stupid might include that they actually allow their ships to be seen in our skies. So it's possible that we are going to see them make some very dumb mistakes that will actually accelerate the awakening greatly as a result of them now trying to take this war footing. And again, we're going to learn more once Gonzalez is able to brief Corey, which should be in the next few days. And we did, we worked with a, wonderful artist and did a, an excellent depiction finally of one of the blue avians excellent that was amazing well, it was a very emotional experience for everyone in the room brilliant well that'd be great to see uh, and we're, we're going to get your details i know there's a question there saying what's your take in cobra but generally i think guests normally don't comment on other people's information would would i be right in saying that yeah i, I don't have anything negative to say about uh Cobra and his information, uh, uh, I, and I've been told not to cause any type of separation or anxiety between different groups and, and, and people, and that's, that's not my goal, so I, I don't have anything negative to say about him. Yeah, okay. And David? Well, I think that the Cobra information has a lot of similarities to things that I've said over the years. Um, I have noticed subjectively multiple times that after I talked about something, that Cobra would then mention it uh, as something that he had experienced. Um, I might be a little more opinionated than Corey is willing to be on the record. I think that it is important for everybody when they listen to me and when they listen to Corey and anybody else that you find out for yourself what is the truth. 
you take what resonates with you and you throw away the rest. Yeah. None of us, Corey nor I, we're not trying to come out here as authority figures. We're not trying to be gurus or saviors. We're just trying to share what we think is the truth and the information that we've encountered. We're not trying to say that you have to go to the website. When people write these emotionally charged comments, you don't have to read our website. We're just out there sharing what we know. Cobra is out there sharing what he knows. Some of it is wildly divergent from what we're saying. Some of what Cobra is saying is extremely different than Corey's personal direct experience. And there's others out there portraying themselves as insiders. And again, I think that if you really get to the core of what these positive beings are telling us, all of these little factoids are really far less important than if the person listening or reading comes away with a feeling of inspiration that encourages them to make positive changes in their lives towards more forgiveness, more compassion, more love, and more service to others' behavior. And that's what Corey keeps saying is the Blue Avian message. So even if people are differing on the transient details of this ET group is from so-and-so and and does such-and-such, when and where, the core really is, are you hearing this in your heart? Are you understanding that humanity is going through an evolution and that you are a part of that evolution? And that the more loving you are, the faster we get the future that we all want. That is the core. And anybody who is contributing to that awakening, in my mind, is a valuable ally. Thank you. That's uh, brilliant, David. That's uh, fantastic. Just uh, for the people on uh, listening to the PIR stream, we're going to disconnect now because uh, obviously you have your show with Vin. But uh, we will just carry on for the next few minutes on the OAM United We Strike stream so people can just uh, listen up. We're just going to be finishing up, finishing up now. But, David, that was brilliant. I was going to say, do you want to summarize uh, about everything and what would your, be your take but what you've just said there is just fantastic is to you know for people to focus on you know service to others and to uh, focus on the love and to try and raise the consciousness and educate people as much as they can I mean you know um, uh, that's a great message that's let me great. just toss in one more thing Alan real briefly and then I'll hand it to Corey again a lot of people the, one of the most prevalent things that we're seeing on the comments in terms of the hate that we're getting is everybody is saying there's one guy who even said proof, 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 right? And everybody's like, you got to prove it. You got to prove it. You got to set up a camera in Corey's bedroom. And when the blue orbs come in and portal him out of his bedroom, you got to film that (laughs) and you got to put it online. It's like, no, dude, if we filmed it, if, if we could, which they probably wouldn't allow us to because of the prime directive anyway, Mm. Everybody's going to say we did it in After Effects. Yeah. It's not about the proof. And it's not about defeating the cabal through some sort of Hollywood grand finale ending Mm. where you see a bunch of guns blaring and UFOs showing up in the sky and portaling Rothschilds up into space. That's not what this is going to be. What we are actually seeing is a consciousness revolution And Corey said it before, but people really need to understand this. No level of proof is going to satisfy you if your heart is not open. Yeah. No level of information is going to get you to make today a special day where you decide to be more loving to those who care about you and those who you interact with. That is a choice that you have to make. Please don't get caught up in all the little details And we have people, when somebody like Corey comes out, they obsess on him, or somebody like Cobra, and they're looking at every little detail. And, well, Cobra said this, and Corey didn't say that, and David is saying such and such. And, look, really, at the end of the day, I got into the UFO field. I wanted to gain information. I was hungry for information. And what eventually happened is that the beings that I was in contact with said, David, we don't want to answer all these questions. We're concerned about you eating the right food. We're concerned about the fact that you worry all the time. You have nothing to worry about. What we really want is for you to meditate, to relax, and to be kind. And if you do that, then everything is going to work out. And when they were telling me that, I was working for $5.70 an hour, $5.77 an hour, two cents above minimum wage, which as if that was some kind of gratuitous thing that they were doing for us. Oh, yeah, we're giving you two cents more than the minimum. And I was working at that point 
in a, in, a, in a room with developmentally disabled people, 12 or 13 adults who had severe developmental disabilities, who had behavior problems, who were taking their excrement and smearing it on the wall and screaming and biting each other and running around, and we had to basically act as umpires. And I was doing that work at minimum wage because I wanted to help. And yet the job that I was in was causing me tremendous anxiety. I would come home at night and have the screaming in my head and have to just lie in bed in the dark until the screaming stopped. And that's when contact with me was made. That's when I contacted these higher beings. And my life looked like it was crap. My life looked like it was never going to get better. I only made $200 a week. All my money went to rent and food. And the being said, David, you got to stop worrying. you got to calm down. you got to get your life under control. If you follow this message, everything is going to be okay. And now my life is completely different, and I can hardly even remember what that life was like back then. Mm-hmm. And it's because I trusted the core of all world religions, which is service to others and compassion. Yeah. And th- that is the core of the message. If you follow that, everything in your life will work out as if by magic there are higher forces who are obligated to take care of you as long as you adhere to the core of the message of peace and love and forgiveness. And how in the hell can that be Illuminati disinformation? Yeah, I told you. If- I totally agree. I mean, if it's all about what resonates with you and just, you know, keep away from certain energies that will affect your energy. And it's not new age mumbo jumbo. This is logical stuff. I mean, I do the same thing and Steve does the same thing. You know, we just avoid things that pull down our energy, you know, and that's really, Absolutely. you know, that's what we do. I mean, that's, that's not new agey. That's just common sense. Right, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the, here's the deal. The, the earlier question that you asked, this is the other very common thread that we get in the hate, which is, this is disinformation, this is the cabal lulling us into a false sense of security, wanting us to be sucking our thumbs and drooling in our beds, thinking that God is going to take care of it and everything's fine, so that the cabal can actually go around and finish the job of killing off the planet. But what Corey said earlier cannot be stressed enough. There are rules in place in the universe, and and everybody I've spoken to who works for the Cabal knows about the rules. They have to tell us what they're doing. They cannot just randomly take over the planet. They have to tell us that they're enslaving us. They have to tell us what their magical practices are. They have to show us what they're doing in movies, in television shows, in acts of government. In media headlines, they have to tell us the truth. The reason why that is is because, believe me, they would prefer to just do whatever they want and never tell us anything, but there are benevolent beings that prevent them from doing that. That means, ultimately, we have to be enslaved by our own free will. Now, these people get into that as if it was a football game and they're rooting for their side. What they don't realize is the free will principle is built in so that we naturally defeat them at the end of the cycle. And that's built into the architecture of spirituality, which is called the hero's journey. My second book, The Synchronicity Key, talks about history repeating in cycles and that it follows a script. The script involves the villain being defeated by the hero once the hero conquers his own flaws. Everyone on earth now is the awakening Christ. Everyone on earth is the Messiah. Everyone on earth is awakening to the core of who and what they are. And the more we move in that direction, the more it is automatic that the negative will be defeated it's it's written into the blueprint of our own cosmic evolution Mm. this is not a false flag this is not illuminati disinformation the core of consciousness awakening is a scientific fact it's provable seven thousand people can get together and meditate and reduce terrorism worldwide by 72 percent that's documented evidence and that's the core of the message it's not a negative message we're not trying to say that you shouldn't take action against the cabal either You can simultaneously be loving and forgiving and be proactive in spreading awareness about the cabal and the heinous things they're doing. Both those things can coexist. I'm not telling you to sit at home and be complacent. I think it's wonderful that the Irish people have had such a massive uprising against an unfair water tax. I had no idea that was going on. I encourage that kind of stuff. I am very politically active. I I wrote a whole book called Financial Tyranny about the cabal exposing their wrongdoings, and that's one of the things that 
attracted Corey into the fray to in the first place. Yeah, and it's been peaceful as well. We've been making sure the protesters have been making sure that it's peaceful. You know, that there's no trouble. Wonderful. You know, and uh, obviously you have some people that infiltrate and try and cause problems, but, you know, um, they would not be the uh, the peaceful protesters. You know, that's all kind of uh, predetermined by uh, certain uh, people in government trying to rouse the crowd, the, the, the rise up for, uh, the crowd, you know. But generally, all the protests have been peaceful, and for that reason. And any time there is trouble, people, the protesters actually walk away from the people who are causing the trouble, the instigators, and basically they, they, they're kind of... It's obvious that they're not part of the crowd, you know. But listen, guys, it's been I'd brilliant. Like, I wanna, yeah. Let's give Corey just a brief chance to respond to what I said, because that is the core of his message, too, and I want to make sure he can get that out. Yeah, of course, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. David covered it very well. And, um, the you know, the core message every day, become more loving, become more forgiving of others and yourself. It stops the wheel of karma to become more service to others to raise your vibration and your consciousness. You don't have to change a religion. You can use prayer, yoga, tai chi, um, per, you know, meditation, in, whatever you use now. All, the, the, all this information is not new. It's a tenets of all the religions out there. And to be service to others doesn't mean you have to be a floor mat to others. So that that's... That's how I, I would I would end it. David covered it beautifully. That's yeah, great information. I totally agree. I kind of say love is the answer. Who cares what the question is? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what it is because it's energy, isn't it? It's a love energy. I mean, you know, um, two two energies, two emotions, love or fear. Which one do you want? Um, Everything's vibration and energy. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay, now, so listen, it's been brilliant having you on. I think we're going to have to do a part two. I know you guys are very busy and you're, you're, you're in demand, but it's just brilliant information to have it over here for our listeners over here in Ireland and the UK um, to hear you come on the show and, and talk about this information. It's, it's really uh, very uplifting and promising for the future for all of us. So a big thank you for coming on. I'm going to pass you off to Steve and Steve's going to get all your details so people will find out where to get you. Thank you. Yeah, Corey, David, again, I want to echo, echo what Alan said there. It has been absolutely mind-blowing information. There's so many people on the chat rooms there, so many questions, a lot of questions that we couldn't get to. But uh, unfortunately, you know, that's just, a, that's just the way it works out. And we've actually gone over time. We normally kind of disconnect at 9 o'clock, but we've actually gone over time. So uh, we're going to definitely have to do a, a, a second part. But I, I do have information here that I have posted up in the chat rooms as well, and that is Corey's website there, sphericalbeingalliance.com, and David's website, divinecosmos.com. Um, we we'll throw it over to you first, Corey. Do you want to maybe give some more information there, or have any closing statements you, you want to make? Um, sphericalbeingalliance.com will get you pretty much uh, to everything, uh, all, all of my information. And um, I basically uh, spoke about, you know, the, the, the message of, you know, loving and forgiving. So I'm good. <laughs> okay, thank you. And David? I would like to say uh, Corey came over to my house in late April, and we filmed six hours of me interviewing him on video. Some of, the, some of the footage is very strong. Some of it is not as strong. It did kind of serve for Corey as like a camera test to figure out what works and what doesn't work. A lot of people are going to be angry when they hear that we have a show that is now forming on Guy TV. There's going to be a separate show that's just Corey and me talking every week for a whole year for a half an hour. Uh, that is going to be available to every subscriber. The basic rate is $9.95 a month. A lot of people have been complaining that we don't have PayPal. The president of Gaia told me in a meeting on Friday that PayPal functionality will be turned on within apparently a very short time, maybe as little as a week or less. So that's going to be really good for people in Europe who don't want to use a credit card. Um, so the, the hue and cry of all the people that are saying, why the hell hasn't David released the video yet? He's sequestering information. He's hiding the truth. Look, it's very simple. I don't have a lot of money. I can't pay anybody to help me. I'm doing this myself. I've been learning all the software. I'm learning Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere Pro. I've made significant progress. I do intend to release 
some of the strongest parts of what he and I talked about in a video. And no matter how much of that I released, it's not even going to begin to cover what we already did this past week in what's going to probably amount to the first 10 episodes out of 52. So if you if you can afford the $10 a month, it's a, it's totally going to be worth it because you can see my show Wisdom Teachings, you can see my show Disclosure, you can see the show with Corey, which one of the working titles for it is Cosmic. I don't know what we're ultimately going to call it yet. Um, I, I would love to have things not be dependent on money at all, but this is a small amount of money, and it's a way in which you can help us. Corey and I are splitting the proceeds 50-50, so if you pay to see the show through his site or through my site, we both get the same amount out of it. So that is fair, and I just, again, want to thank everybody for supporting us. We do need your help, and I really appreciate it. Okay. It's on, uh, it's on Finn, is it? Or it's on the website, is it? Okay. I'm having trouble hearing you at this point. Yeah, sorry okay. about that, lads. There's some uh, music coming in there, maybe one of these adverts on uh, the uh, one of these websites. But listen, the information has been brilliant. Thanks again. Um, as I say, people can find you there with the contact information. We're going to have the podcast up in about an hour after the show when we get that done we get it up there so if you can just bear with us for a few minutes we're going to wind up the show and um, if you just hang on there for a few minutes and we'll be back sure. here in about five minutes okay right okay that was brilliant that was david wilcock and curry good uh, et brilliant information there thanks to vin for us rolling over onto his time slot on pir thanks again for that vin and um, much appreciated right next week just to wind things up next week we have a, K, a lady called kate curtis who's a healer and she was over with uh, james gilliland over on his ranch and she's going to be talking to us about her experience being over on james's ranch and also uh, a chap called chris coverdale if he's not in jail um, he did. He's uh, basically fighting the uh, the tax over there in the UK, and he's going to tell us all about the tax and why it's corrupt and we, why we shouldn't be paying it. So if he's not in jail, we'll have him on the show. That's the plan. But uh, for myself, uh, Alan James, have a good week. Stay safe. Take it easy, and uh, keep your energy up, as uh, David and Corey said. And uh, think positive. Focus on your conscious, and uh, you know, service to others. That's the way we have to go, Steve. Yeah, I totally agree. Service to others. And again, do try and keep your en- your energy up. Um, you know, e- eat natural and just get out there in the sunshine. And uh, just enjoy life because, you know, you can sit in front of the TV, listen to the news and uh, hear all the doom and gloom. You can worry about all the doom and gloom or you can just put it to, you know, put it in a, in a box in your a mental a box in your, in your mind and put a question mark on it and, you know, look at it some other time. But uh, no, just enjoy life. If you have children, just, you know, just... Enjoy your children because they are the future. Just teach them everything you can. Uh, and again, just, 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 you know, be one with the universe and uh, enjoy it all. It's, as uh, what Bill Hicks once said, it's all just a ride, you know. So just, just enjoy the ride. Okay, from myself, Stephen George, again, it's been a gr- fantastic show. Thanks again to Vin on PIR for uh, giving us uh, the stream also. And we'll do it all again 